Hello students and welcome to the e-learning program initiated by Shri Kyan Manjri Vidyapet for the students of standard 10 in which we are learning the subject of English. From the previous two lectures we have started with chapter number 4 of first flight that is the main book. Name of the chapter is from the diary of Anne Frank. Let us take a quick recap of what we have learnt in the previous two lectures. Up till now, we have learnt that the diary was given as a present on the 13th birthday of Anne Frank. And from then on, she has maintained the diary. The family shifted from Germany to Holland and then to Netherlands. Anne Frank and the family was basically Jew. After the World War I that had ended, ended in 1919, Hitler started gaining power from 1929 onwards and in 1931 he assumed the title of Chancellor and then became the dictator of Germany. Then in, he put into force his ideology that the Nordic Aryans they were the most supreme beings on the earth and in that list the Jews came the last and he started eradicating the complete race started with that in Germany each and every Jew was found out and all his belongings was were stripped away from him and they were sent to the concentration camps where they were kept for a few days Many of them died of starvation, many of them died of the severe cold and most of them were killed in the gas chambers. So when the, when the situation started getting tighter for the Jews and Frank's father shifted to Holland and then to Netherlands and then he shifted his family over there in Amsterdam and they lived happily for a short time but then the Nazis they started their extension program and they started attacking the nearby European countries and making them the extension of Germany in this process someone betrayed the family of Anne Frank and whole of the family was captured by the Nazis and sent to the concentration camp where eventually Margot the elder sister she died first and Anne Frank she died and after that the only survivor of the family, that is the father, Otto Frank, he was released by the allies who were victorious in the war. And then he came back to Amsterdam to find, to search for his family's belongings. Amongst all the things he found in Frank's diary, after going through the diary, he thought this was a very genuine document to prove how the Jews were harassed, tortured, how the minds of little children were tormented by this torture. So he got the diary converted into, translated into English and then it was published under the name of Diary of a Young Girl. And instantly it became 
quite popular and famous all over the world and people were very much touched about the way uh, feelings and emotions were expressed by Anne Frank in the diary. We also learnt about that Anne Frank, she introduces herself and the situation wherein she introduces as to the other people of the family, her own thoughts, that much we have learnt. So now let us go ahead with the chapter. Anne Frank continues about writing about her past. She says that once she was kept on the table, banged on the table as a gift to Margot from then time from that time. I started right away at the Montessori nursery school. So she was put in the nursery school. I stayed there until I was six years old. Because six years is the age when the child comes to first standard or first grade. At which time I started in the first form, that is the first grade. In the sixth form, that is sixth grade or sixth standard, my teacher was Mrs. Cupris. So, Anne Frank tells us about her past. Right now she is 13 years old. Right, so she tells her about, tells us about her past. That is, the time when she came to Amsterdam. She was hardly six years old, so she had to join the Montessori school, nursery school, and then she was there up till she was six years old, and then she came to. The first standard, that is the first form. First form. Form here means the standard. She stayed in that school till she was in the sixth standard. That means still she was in the sixth standard. And in the sixth form, that is the sixth standard, her teacher was Mrs. Cuperus. Now, Mrs. Cuperus also was the headmistress, that means the principal of the school, and she taught one of the classes also. At the end of the year, we were both in tears as we said a heartbreaking farewell. So, when it was time to change the school, Being in that same school for such a long time, that means she studied there till she came to his standard. So, staying over there, she got quite a lot of attachment with the school, with the premises, with that particular atmosphere at the school, and particularly all the teachers who were quite regular at the time. And Mrs. Cupris took care of all the children. So very well that all the children were quite attached with the teacher as well as the headmistress. So when it was time to say goodbye from the school, Anne Frank and Mrs. Cupris they were both in tears because now Anne Frank is going away from school, joining another school. So. They were literally crying and they said a heartbreaking farewell. Heartbreaking which breaks the heart. You are not willing but then circumstances are such that she has to leave. So it's quite a heartbreaking moment when there is a separation between an adorable child and a respectful teacher. In the summer of 1941, Grandma fell ill and had to have an operation, so my birthday passed with little celebration. Now already the claws of Nazis were tightening on the Jews and the Jews were running here and there. They were already desperate and in such a condition Grandma fell ill because 
Anne Frank, we understand, is still a very young girl. We are talking about 1941, so she is hardly, say, some 12 years old. So, the young children, they are always very much attached with the grandparents. The girls, they are especially attached with grandmas because they are there every time for her. They eat with them, they sleep with them, they play with them. They are under the observation of grandma. The grandma tell, uh, tells stories. Right, so quite a lot of attachment is there between the little girls and the grandma. And she fell ill and she had to have an operation. Now, here, and Frank even doesn't know what type of operation or what type of disease was grandma having. So she writes in short, but she writes the main part. For a small child, the birthday is the biggest event in the life. You ask any small child, every month they will be having their birthday, right? So they are least bothered with whether they complete a year or not, but the celebration should be there every month. So that is the importance of birthdays. So Anne Frank, she wanted to celebrate her birthday with a bang but as grandma was ill and had to undergo an operation so a whole of the family was quite busy in that and grandma of course was in the hospital so and frank's birthday was celebrated with lots of simplicity and only a little celebration so that is written over here that the celebration went out very easily, not how I expected. But what we see here is the maturity of that little girl. She doesn't complain. She understands the situation and then writes that because of grandma's illness, my birthday passed with little celebration. She is not sorry for that. The next line gives us a lot of in-depth understanding of the little girl. Grandma died in January 1942. No one knows how often I think of her and still love her. When these grandmas they die, the little children, they all of a sudden, they become silent. You know why children? It's because they are not able to express, because they do not have a way of expressing. They don't know how to express the loss. They are not able to tell the elders how much attached they were, how much they loved these grandmas and grandpas and all of a sudden there is a void, a total vacuum in the house because an elderly person has died and the child is very much attached with that elderly person. Rather than the parents, she was more attached so she cannot say how much she loved her, her grandma but she is not able to tell anyone so no one knows that is what she is writing in the diary no one knows exactly how much i miss grandma and how much i loved her and i still wanted her with me but she died the birthday celebration in 1942 was intended to make up for the other. Now, in 1941, previous year, the birthday celebration was quite simple and with very little celebration. So, and after that, naturally, the grandma died. But the next year, that is 1942, the birthday was celebrated with a big band to make up the loss of the previous birthday that is the meaning of intended intended means the intention was to make up what is make up to compensate that means there was a loss that time so here we celebrate so that the past is forgotten and grandma's candle was lit along with the rest to make grandma present over there because she was member of the family the family had lost her so her candle was lit separately to 
make the others feel that grandma is also with us so grandma's candle was lit along with the rest the four of us are still doing well four of us father mother margot and and frank the fifth member is gone so the four of us are still doing well and that brings me to the present date of 20 june 1942 and the song dedication of my diary so we are all very well up till here and this was my past up till this date that is 20th of june 1942 and then comes the diary so this is where she starts writing the diary up till now she told us about her past som only dedication strong wish to do something that is called dedication of my diary a small comprehension check that is also given in the pdf that is supplied to you pdf of chapter 4 still we'll go through it so that any doubts can be removed why does and provide a brief sketch of her life and provides a brief sketch of her life since no one would understand a word of her musings if she were to jump right in somebody opens the diary the date is there and she starts writing the diary nobody knows who frank and frank is and nobody knows what happened in the past that is why she gives us a detailed in- information about her past and then comes the diary entry with chronicled diary entry that is date wise but before that date wise she tells us without any dates she tells us about her past what tells you that and loved her grandmother a very very important question her statement that no one could understand her intensity of love for her grandma tells her tells us that she loved her grandmother very very much she is telling us that no one can understand now how can somebody understand how much a little child loves her grandma there is no measurement for that right and because the da- child doesn't say we do not come to know how much the child is loving her grandmother moreover the touching gesture of her lighting up one candle for grandmother during aunt's birthday also as a poignant reminder for the love for grandma poignant striking so when the birthday is being celebrated a separate candle in uh, in these uh, religions uh, on the on the death days of the family members on the death anniversary of cell, uh, the family members a candle is lit to remind the family members of that day so here it's an important event for the little girl that is her birthday and that is why she lights a, a candle separately for grandmother to show her love and she still remembers her grandmother that's a poignant remem- reminder that is a very striking reminder to show that she still loved her grandmother now we come to part 4.3 which is actually the diary entry saturday 20 june 1942 that is the first diary entry see students in those days the day date was written on the right hand side then we came to right hand side dear kitty kitty we should remember kitty is the name nickname she has given to the diary she loves her diary like anything and so she gives a name to the diary dear kitty comma then whatever happened on that day she's writing 
our entire class is quacking in its boots quacking in the boots means quacking in the boots shaking the legs shaking and why are the legs uh, legs why are they shake and shaking the reason of course is the forthcoming meeting in which the teacher decides who will move up to the next form that is the next standard and who will be kept back that means retained in the same standard of course what is the scale what is the measurement the exams all throughout the year they have given the exams and now depending upon the result it will be decided by the administration management who will go to the next standard and who will be kept back because their performance was not good and they need to study more in that same standard or same form so that thoda base thoda aur pakka ho jaye right so whole of the class was was quacking in the boots that means their legs were trembling and that means excitement who is going to pass and who is going to fail half the class is making bets they are teenagers so they were betting among themselves taking chances and placing bets that means just casually who is going to pass gn and i laugh ourselves silly at the two boys behind us everywhere throughout the diary initials are given though people were smart enough to find those students who studied with and frank many of those students were traced and when the translation was done from dutch to english care was taken that identity of people is not revealed so initials were supplemented so that nobody knows the identity and uh, nobody gets harassed or comes in the limelight because of the actual name taken in the diary so actual names they were either given initials or wrong initials were given so that the actual identity is safe so gn that means the girl who is sitting next to and frank i that means g and i that means g n and and frank they laugh themselves silly that means they have quite a good of good laughter because they overheard the boys the, those who were sitting behind their bench at the two boys behind us cn again an initial that means identity is hidden and jx of course a pseudo name is wrong that means a wrong name is used over here fake name is used jx who have staked their entire holiday savings on their pet their entire holiday saving they place bet who is going to go to the next class and who is going to be retained in their present standard so actual bet is being placed over here by cnn jakes so from morning to night it's you are going to pass no i am not yes you are no i am not even g's pleading glances and my angry outbursts can't calm them down so both these boys sitting just behind the girls they were placing bets and they were all of the time telling to each other you are going to pass other one says no i am not going to pass other one says yes you are no i am not and because they are sitting in a class they are not supposed to make noise so and frank and g both of them they now and then cast a glances pleading glances that means begging them pleading means begging them that sort of glances they are throwing at these two boys to keep quiet and my angry outburst and frank couldn't control herself and now and then shouts a little bit on them that is also not stopping them it's not calming both these boys down if you ask me now she says something very personal if you ask me how many are going to pass and how many are going to next class 
there are so many dummies that about a quarter of the class should be kept back. Dummies, dumb people, dumb students. There are so many. Students, they know among themselves who is smart and who is dumb. So, and thinks that there are so many dummies, that means dumb students over there, that quarter of a class, quarter means 25%. 25% of the class should be kept back. But the teachers are the most unpredictable creatures on earth. A very, very good sentence written by Anne Frank. Teachers, they are the most unpredictable creatures on the earth. You never know who the teacher will pass and who the teacher is going to fail. Even if when you think you have outperformed everyone, then also you will be getting half of the marks from the total marks and then you would be crying. You don't know what mistake you have done until the paper comes in front of you. So, right? And the person you think that this person won't be able to solve a single problem in mathematics and he gets full score. So, the teachers are the most unpredictable. So, here also the same thing applies that according to Anne Frank, at least 25% of the class should be retained and 75% should go to the next class. But then, the whom, one who, whom we hope that he is going to pass gets failed and the person we assume that is going to fail passes and goes on to the next class. So, teachers, you can't predict them. Predict them. Tell about the future. I am not so worried about my girlfriends and myself. We will make it. So, as far as Anne Frank is concerned, she thinks about herself that she is going to make it going to make it that means whatever outcome is going to come her outcome is going to come positive she will be able to have success that means go to the next class not only for herself but her friends also she is very very sure that we all are going to make it the only subject i am not sure about is just like you people maths Anyway, all we can do is wait. She is sure she, will, she is going to make it. And she is sure about her friends also that all of them are going to make it. But inside, she knows she is weak in maths. But then, let's wait. Anyway, all we can do is wait until the we keep telling each other not to lose heart. That means they are trying to comfort each other. They think one of the girl is feeling sad or not happy because she's worried about her result and she thinks she's going to fail, then all the other girls will get together and ask her not to lose heart. What is lose heart means not to become sad, not to give up and not to assume that you are going to fail. So they try to comfort each other and everybody's situation is the same. So, they comfort each other and make themselves happy. No, the result is going to be good. And I am going to pass. We all are going to pass. That way, they try to comfort each other. I get along pretty well with all my teachers. There are nine of them. Seven men and two women. I get along. Get along means I am very comfortable with all my teachers. That means I do not have complaints. They usually don't have a complaints. I do as they ask me to do and whatever is asked from them, I do it. So, quite a good rapport is set between the students and the teachers. So, I get along pretty well with all my teachers. No complaint. There are nine teachers in all. Out of that, there are seven men and two women. Mr. Kissing, the old foggy who teaches maths, was annoyed with me for ages because I talked so much. The same thing for you people. Foggy means usually an old person who is out of fashion. So, Mr. Kissing, he was out of fashion. 
who teaches maths maths never changes so literally doesn't have to do anything with age was annoyed with me annoyed he was not happy because for ages means for quite a long time the same teacher might be teaching all those standards so because i talked too much i talked so much that while he's teaching on the board i'm talking and he has given some work i'm talking and literally dising disturbing him and the class and now and then he again has to stop me from talking and that is why he gets disturbed and that is why he gets annoyed because i talk too much after several warnings he assigned me extra homework usually that is what happens so punishment is given he gave me lots of verbal warnings several warnings were given to me but i did not listen to him and i kept on talking that is and frank kept on talking and did not adhere to the instructions given by the maths teacher mr kissing so after several warnings he got fed up and then he assigned me that means he gave me extra homework extra homework is to be taken as punishment so very good words are written by the little girl he assigned me extra homework she doesn't directly write that uh, mr kissing the maths teacher gave me punishment homework now mr kissing is a maths teacher but the assignment given or the extra homework or the punishment given was to write an essay on the subject a chatter box now what's a chatter box who continuously keeps on talking making sound talking is all right but when unnecessarily you are talking you are just creating noise that's called a chatter box a chatter box a person who constantly keeps on talking is called a chatter box so she has to write an essay on the subject a chatter box now she is a chatter box herself a person who is not a chatter box can easily write on a chatter box now a person who is a chatter box himself or herself how can she or he write an essay on a chatter box so that is exactly her reaction and she writes her reaction in that diary a chatter box who can what can you write about that now chatter box what a strange subject now what can you write about a chatter box i will worry about that later i decided now it is an assignment homework that i have to do at home so i am not going to get worried and filled with tension just like yourself yes she is 13 years old you are some 15 maybe right so just like you punishment aata hai to aane do so not at all worried about the punishment to ghar ja kar karna hai so right so let me worry about that later right now the main thing is let me jot down the title otherwise i'll go home and forget it then it will be a problem i would be worrying about that later i decided so i jotted down the title in my notebook jotted down scribbled right with speed i just noted down the title so that when i open my notebook i come to know what i have to write on what subject i have to write the essay on so i jotted down the title in my notebook and tucked that notebook in my bag tucked here it means put the notebook in my bag and i tried to keep quiet now she had been she had received lots of warnings from mr mr kissing not to talk or stop talking lots of instructions were given lots of time warnings were given she did not listen that is why extra homework is given punishment homework is given now i scribbled the name of the subject uh, topic and i put that notebook in my bag and now what i am trying to do i am trying to remain quiet that means i am trying not to talk i am trying not to become a chatterbox i already got an extra punishment homework 
I am not going to receive anything more than this. So she tried to remain quiet. That evening, after I had finished the rest of my homework, the note about the essay caught my eye. So that evening, when she after school, when she went home and then sat down to do her homework, she finished all her homework. A very good child, I would say, finishing all her homework regularly without someone asking her to do her homework. That's quite, I think, an obedient child. So she finished all her homework, rest of my homework, and then where I had written that note, the, the name of the topic on which I had to write the extra assignment, that is punishment homework, that caught my eye. Caught my eye? That means I looked at it and suddenly I remembered, yes, I have to write that. So I began thinking about the subject while chewing the tip of my fountain pen. Again, the girl is just like you. Yes, chewing the juice of the fountain pen. In those days, ball pens were not there. So fountain pen where we had to put in ink. So, just like you people, when you are in deep thoughts, when you are doing your homework, solving math problem, you chew on the tip of your pencils, pens, usually the cap. You keep on chewing that plastic and sucking on that juice, plastic juice. So she's also doing the same thing. Chewing on the tip of her fountain pen, she's thinking very hard what to do about this topic. The chatterbox, I don't know anything about it. And suddenly I had an idea. So I think that chewing on the tip of the pen helps. Yes, when you chew on the tip of the pen, some idea does come up. Now it's up to you whether the idea comes because you are thinking hard or because you are chewing the tip of your pen. So suddenly she had an idea. What she does is something like what you people do. Anyone could ramble on and leave big spaces between the words. Ramble on, write all sorts of nuisance. Who is reading? Right? So, anyone can do that. Whatever the topic is, just start the few starting lines about the topic and then you think that nobody reads it. So, you just keep on rambling. Rambling, you talk all about everywhere else except the topic. Keep on rambling. So you are all intelligent students and just like you people, she is also quite a bright student and she knows how to write an essay by fooling the teacher. Yes, write with big, big handwritings. So what actually you have written is 50 words, but then it takes up two pages, right? So, and leave lots of spaces in between words so that the essay looks three pages but hardly it has 70 words right so that is normal everybody does that right when we are out of ideas anyone could ramble on and leave big spaces between the words that is how usually punishment essays are written but that same thing has to be done in a very tactful in a very intelligent manner or how do we do that? But the trick was to come up with convincing arguments to prove the necessity of talking. So anyone can ramble on. That means keep on writing all type of nuisance. Write big, big letters. And writings should be quite big. And lots of space in between words. But the trick of the trade is if the teacher does read it, then there should be convincing argument. What is convincing? To make someone convince or to make someone agree. Arguments used in the essay should be such that the person, the teacher, should be convinced that yes, talking is necessary. Chatterbox? No. Talking is necessary. To prove the necessity of talking. I'll write the essay of 
chatterbox but then i will convince him that what i am doing is absolutely correct and these are my reasons for continuous talking i thought and thought and suddenly i had an idea so she thought very hard how to write a long essay and that also will keep on blabbering keep on rambling anyone can do it i'm not going to do that i'm going to write an essay which is going to convince mr kissing that talking is necessary how to do that suddenly i had an idea and i started writing i wrote three pages for mr kissing what he had assigned me and then i was satisfied so what we learn over here is a 13 year old girl she has been given a punishment homework she can just write any nonsense write with big hand writings leave lots of spaces in between words so that you increase the length of the essay you have not written any material in that essay what the little girl wanted was instead of doing or writing nonsense in that essay she wanted to convey the message to the teacher that i am a chatterbox i continuously keep on talking and talking is very very necessary so i have to come up with reasons i have to come up with arguments and in such a way that mr kissing will be convinced that talking is necessary so she had to think very hard now the subject is already an abstract right in, nobody can write much on it's a chatterbox according to her so the ch- subject is quite tough and on top of that she wanted to make it more tougher not for herself but for the reader that is the math teacher mr kissing she wanted the essay to be tougher for mr kissing the math teacher who is going to read the essay might be mr kissing has an habit he has a habit just like me to read your work in the class right so that means whole of the class is going to listen here what she has written in the essay so all these things they make her think much more harder and then suddenly she had an idea and she started scribbling and she did not stop till she had written three full pages on the essay given by the math teacher and then she was satisfied okay students we are going to stop over here for the day the assignment as usual will be given in a separate pdf along with this video you must have completed the previous assignment given in the previous video that is error rectification today also you are going to get more practice on the question of error rectification which will be taken from the textbook students it's an advice that you always keep on reading the textbook that is the pdf of the chapters that is given to you you continuously whether it is free time whether it is time for homework first have a habit of reading the pdf before you sit down to do the homework when you sit down to do the homework at that time please do not open the pdf to get the answers it's a very wrong habit only thing is you will get excellent in your remark but then you will be cheating yourself right students so 
whenever an whenever a homework or an assignment is given to you at that time please do not take help of the books do that homework on your own whether few things here and there might be wrong but that's going to teach us that we have to be more careful we have to read more we have to do more hard work if we want to excel in the language and if we want to score better marks in each and every test whether that is a two mark test 20 mark test or an 80 mark board paper if we do not put that into habit right now then at the end we are going to have 21 chapters and then it becomes very difficult for us to go through each and every chapter at the end of the year so students my humble advice is chapter number one two three is quite over we have understood it so continuously whenever you have time open the PDF in a very short while you will be given your uh, material also physical material that is the printed books will be given to you so whenever you have time go through the books keep on reading so that slowly slowly most of the material becomes by heart and you know what is right and what is wrong thank you students